Okay, so we've got that IK, FK following on with the rest of the body. So one last thing we want to do is check that it is working with the mail scripts that we did earlier on. So a couple of changes we need to make. So let's go over these. So there's no major changes to the FK controls because we haven't really done much with the FK. So um, so the FK to IK is pretty much the same as usual. But um, one thing we want to do is just double check things. So this name here, JTBN left wrist. So let's just go to that left wrist. And we can see the name is still JTBN because it's still being used to bind the skin. So we're okay there. The wrist hasn't changed and the pole vectors and the IK global controls are still the same. So not a lot needs to be changed in there. But when we come over to the um, IK to FK, we're querying a lot of these joints, which remember we have renamed to JTBN because at the start of this tutorial I went through how to set up the arm as normal because um, there's some rigs where you don't really want these ribbon spines in there, you just want a normal a normal IK FK arm that's not going to have all these ribbons in there or different sort of twist controls but because we have put the ribbon in there we renamed these to the DRV because the ribbon is what we're going to be binding with so this is just the driver chain now we're not going to not going to bind with these anymore so these have been renamed JTDRV so we need to make sure that our mail scripts because again we're, we're querying these joints and before these were called JTBN so if you've still got these as JTBN basically Maya's going to say error cannot find this JTBN left shoulder joint because it doesn't exist so we just need to make sure we re rename these the DRV uh, there's one last thing I've done down here which is to query the rotation so r uh, wrist rotate vector equals x form query and I'm just querying the rotate of the wrist and then later down here once we've set the IK to FK you can see here I'm running a rotate command world space and I'm taking the X Y and Z of that and applying it to the wrist so the reason for this is if I um, rotate the wrist, I'll move this down here, and then if I run this mail script here, so I pressed E in here by accident, so I'll make sure I delete that. And I'll run this. So, so I'll undo that before. If I just comment this out. Let's see what happens. You can see by commenting that out, you can see the wrist is snapping. You know, it's not matching the rotation anymore. So I'll just undo that. You can see how it's popping. And the reason before, because of that is because we have the wrist and then we have this group that's following along. So we just need to remember that now we've got this wrist offset group following along. What I actually need to do is query the world space of this pivot we're doing up here it's querying the world space rotate so how this rotation you know what's what's the rotation of this relation to the grid and then this rotate command down here rotate world space we're taking that absolute rotation and we're reapplying it so with all this mail script up here we get that dodgy offset but then then we reset it back to its original rotation and then we set the IKFK blend to 1. So basically all we're doing there is the same as what we've, we've done with um, the FK control. We're querying the rotation, we're moving the arm about and then we're reapplying that rotation back there so the wrist doesn't change. So again this is going to be in the description below and the description of a few other videos that use a bit of mail script in there so don't have to worry if you don't want to you can pause the video now and try to look at this or just get the link below okay so we've got the IK and FK switching in there which is working quite well but another thing we want to do is um, we don't really want to switch this follow body off as we're in FK mode because you can see that's not going to really work out for us we, we always want this to follow so if the animator has been working in FK 
and he's set this to the zero and then he switches to FK and then well sorry if he's in IK and he switches that to zero so for example if the character's grabbing hold of a table and the body's moving about he doesn't want the wrist to follow along with the body so he'll set the follow body to zero which is what you want but then if he comes into FK control he'll be wanting this wrist to follow along with the FK because that's what the FK system's for you can get that nice arc in there so what, what we actually want to do is also bypass this so every time the FK is on this follow this is always going to follow no matter what value you have in here but we also want to retain the animators because what one thing we could do is we could put a bit of a script in here that says set at a follow body to 1 so it's as we come into FK this is going to be set to 1 but the downside of that is what if the animator wanted to keep this as 0 so that when he switched back into the IK it remembered his value well then we could add some more mel script up here that might query some keyframes earlier on and reset that back but already we're getting getting way too complicated so what we can actually do is at the root of this graph here is just add another section so if you think these controls down here what they are doing is they are picking between two values the first value is basically follow the chest the second value is zero so what we could actually do is instead of having the second value as zero we could have the second value derived from another set of blend color above and those sets of blend colors will be two sets of values either it's following it or it's not and we could set that so it's connected to the IK FK blend so we'll go ahead and start doing this so before I start doing this I'm just going to rename this IK arm I'm going to put this IK so this is the IK follow setup so just renaming these blend colors with IK that way when we hit control D duplicate these and we want to make sure when you duplicate stuff in the hypershade sometimes it it goes a bit wacko and flips these about so we just want to make sure we're moving these in the right position so this is the left arm um, follow rotate so I know I'm keeping the rotates on the right hand side so yep that's that one this is the right arm translate your right arm rotate left arm translate and I'll start renaming these. This is the right arm, and instead of IK, it's FK or one. Do the same here, FK or one. Again, it's quite tedious, but if we ever need to debug or improve on this rig, you know, it's going to be instantly clear what these blank colors are doing, what they, what they used for. Okay, so got these blend colors here. I'm going to reset all their color one and color two to zeros, just so we're starting clean. And I'll move these in the middle a bit. So now what we need to do is basically move these into the color two of here. So basically, it's saying the color two is zero, not follow the world. But then we want to actually take this in this zero here and expand it a bit so if it's IK we want we want to be able to have this as zero so what we're going to do up here is actually have the IK FK switch so if it is FK we basically want no matter what it chooses the top or the bottom it's it's going to be the same tie control it's going to be following so it's, that way it's going to be the same value but if it's FK it's zero and then then that's going to go down here, this is going to be zero as well and then the animator has control to switch that on or off so what we'll do here is just drag and drop these other and I'm going to take the output of this top one to the colour 2 again reload left, reload right I'm going to take the output to the colour 2 the same over here to the output, put it in the colour 2 take the output, put it in the colour 2 going to move these about
Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the IKFK control, graph, add selected graph, and I'll stick that in the middle. So when we're on zero, we are on IK. So what we want to do is actually when we're on one, we're in FK. So when this is one, so I'm going to put this into each one of these blenders. So and also because we've got the left and right, make sure this is the right hand side, so the right IKFK control is the blender, blender, reload right, and then we can see here this is the left hand side, so make sure we're doing the left IKFK blender and blender. So this is set to zero, so this is IK mode. So when we're in zero, we are choosing the second value, which is set to zero, so this means this zero is going to come down to here so now we've got zeros in here so now the animator can say we can follow the tie which is top value or we can follow the second value which is zero so we can follow nothing which is what we want but if we are in FK mode what we want to do is set the color one to the tie control which means the color one down here will be the tie control and also the tie control so that way it doesn't matter which one we pick here so the you know it's it's going to be on no matter what okay so to do that take this tie control and we're going to put it into the so I'll take the do the same again take the translate put that into the color one take the rotate color one same on this tie control take the translate Color one. Take the rotate. Color one. Okay, so it might look a bit confusing at the moment, so I'll just go ahead, try explain this a little better. So, if we see here this tie control on the left hand side, the arm has been moved, so that tie control now has some values in here. So, what what happens here? The translate and rotate comes down here and the user has a choice either you set it to 1 so have you set the follow body to 1 so we take this top value so we follow the body or you set it to 0 which is taking the second value so if I put this to 0 you can see here we are not following the chest anymore okay so we're taking this 0 value click that again we're following the chest. So following this. So follow the chest. Not follow the chest. Okay, so I'll set that to one. Well actually I set this to zero now. So set this to zero, not following the chest. But set the IKFK blend to one. And now you can see here, look, it's it's smoothly bending back and what this actually means is if we look at the graph here because are we it can be quite confusing but you just have to rack your head around it because we are taking the zero because we are not we don't want to follow the body the the IK FK I mean the follower is set to, set to zero so we are choosing the second value which should be zero but here you can see it's got the identical values because the one value is taking the tie control and the two value is actually taking this new part of the graph and because we are in FK it's taking the first value which is follow so basically this, this is a way of bypassing the follow attribute so if this is at 0 or 1 it's not going to care now because it's pick, picking between following that or following that because we're setting FK so we're making sure the animator as is in FK it is always following the wrist and then if we go back so this way we can keep the follow to zero so the animator can keep the follow to zero and we can go back to FK and it's remembered that we didn't want it to follow whereas before we would have to reset that follow again. 
Okay, so that's just how we can get to remember if we want it to follow or not. And now we've renamed these mail scripts, renamed what it's going to be querying, that IKNFK is going to work again, so we can keep using this script again.